All right, this is continuing my work on anti-gravity research. Um, since the previous video, my uh, plexiglass gravifier tipped off this table and shattered into half a dozen pieces, and I've been rebuilding, <clears throat> rebuilding it uh, more rugged ever since. And with the idea of falsifying any notion of this being air currents holding it up. So with that in mind, I got these uh, plastic boxes and it's uh, about eight inch by eight inch. And under this cover, I have my disc and my shaft isn't perfect. I have some new shafts being made. Um, and I'll take this apart for you so you can see. So it's an M6 wide flat oval head screw. Um, countersunk one didn't work. I drilled it out for M6. I have this copper contact mounted on a standoff connected to this 30 kV insulation wire that comes out the side. And uh, this is my shaft. It's a 10 millimeter OD, 8 millimeter ID polycarbonate uh, tube with an M6 threaded insert that I threaded in. Unfortunately, threading them in, they don't go in straight. Sometimes you get it right, but two out of three times it goes in crooked or the tube splits. And then that's mounted through, uh, through the shaft with a pin, um, the, the motor shaft with a pin, which I used a, an M3 screw. And then here I have collar, collar nuts that mount to the motor. And I have, first I had standoffs, but then the motor sits way up and the shaft gets very long and then it's very wobbly. So I'm trying to keep the shaft short while maintaining at least 40 millimeters of insulation gap. Um, so the motor's just mounted to the bottom. It's very sturdy, very solid with these nuts. And like I say, they're collar nuts, so they reach down through the plastic to grab the uh, studs coming out of the motor. But they didn't make those studs long enough. So that's the, uh, the upper half. All right, uh, put that back together. It's tight. And you can see it's anything but straight. That's why I got a problem with the shaft. That's the upper one. That aside, I also have the Grava Cooler. I heard someone made the suggestion. I had already done it uh, at APEC last week, but, um, but this is the other half is in here. All right, and the only difference between this one and that one is that this one's got the magnets on the disc. It's the same magnet, same disc I had before. And what we're gonna see is how this looks with iron filings. These are just iron filings in a case so you can visually see the magnetic field lines. And we'll try to spread them out a bit so they catch. And they gave me five of these. It, it would have been nice to have six, but I only have five. And here's the last one here. Kind of holds it all together. All right. Now I have... Uh, Clarity reversed going on the motor, so looking down from the top, it's turning this way. And I will try to bring the camera closer so you can get a good look at this. 
All right, I want you to get a good look at it. And uh, you can see the magnets are currently here, 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 and here. Um, those are the six magnets. That's right where they are. You can see that. All right, here goes. I'm just gonna hold it down a little bit. It's starting up, a lot of vibration. Watch it, it's just dragging in, it's like dragging in the, the, the filings and making it part of the ring. This is dragging it in. So there's a magnetic field this way, all the way around the outside. And then there's a magnetic field this way, radially outward on the inside that's pulling the flux. Now, if you want to talk uh, flux in terms of um, the arrow of the magnetic flux density, then out here the arrow is pointing outward, and in here the arrow, the arrow is pointing inward toward the center because its north is pointing up. So you can see the, uh, the pattern formed. Now watch closely when I turn off the power. Watch what it does. It gets dragged around, and that's some evidence that there's some torsion going on when it's slowing down. See it dragged to the right? Yep. And then you can see where the magnet stopped. Pretty cool. Anyway. Um, I've done some measurements with this crappy handheld meter and, uh, I don't know, at maximum field strength I see above this, uh, plate, above this plastic is at, at most 200 gauss. Um, we have maybe 0.8 gauss at the center there's very there's there's flux pointing downward in the center and there's flux pointing inward toward the center but there's barely any pointing upward over here it's all pointing upward and over here like i say it's pointing outward all the way around and uh you know um if you have a outward magnetic flux and you can get a um, electric current going circumferentially that would produce a lift upward so let's uh one more test here where'd it go <laughs> i tried just setting this plate on top of these things this this is steel now when i measured the effect with this plate this way on the uh, on the plastic without these on it, almost nothing gets through it. So Alexia is right about that, that the magnetic flux um, doesn't pass through so they don't cancel each other out. has no effect with these things on there. Well, okay, currently the load on the motor, it's a 12.5 volts, 0.51 amps. When I put this on top, it jumps to 0.6 amps. So it puts a load on the motor when it's on this way. Now, if I try to put it on this way, it's very magnetic. Now the load on the motor is 1.32, 1.33 amps. 
and the magnets are hitting the top because they're getting pulled toward the plate. So you got to kind of give it a little play. I can't put it on there directly. I got to either make the shaft shorter so the magnets don't hit the top or put a little gap like this. Just the gap of the, the rim is enough. And yeah, out here you can measure flux coming out, but over here there's hardly nothing. I don't know, can you all see that? I got it. Over here we have a little flux. And as soon as you get up over the rim, pretty much goes to nothing. Right. That's the radial direction flux. Pretty much nothing out here. There's quite a bit down here. If I go horizontally in the middle, there's really not much getting through. Right here where the magnets are is the strongest. And out here. Now if I take this away, hear the motor speed up. Now, This way. This should be Z direction I'm gonna look for. And then this will be theta direction as an equal direction. And if I haven't mentioned it, there's no high voltage applied. This is the high voltage wire. It's not hooked to anything. This is just the magnet spinning. All right, so that's the data. That's the visuals. And that's the design. You can, um, once this is complete, I mean, this will stack on there. You can push it down in. Everything holds stable. And if it works, we'll have a flying cooler. <laughs> we shall see. The Grava Cooler is coming. Have a great day.